STV, votre télé. Youths in Cameroon have celebrated a 2018 National Youth Day in Pomp and Fanfare through patriotic songs and messages, with a timid turnout in some parts of the southwest and northern regions recorded. Plus, we shall in this newscast revisit the traditional February 10 address by President Paul Bia to the youth on the occasion of the National Youth Day in Cameroon. Those are my top stories, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon and thanks for joining me, Henry Wanap, at the Anchor in Douala. We begin this newscast from Bamendam, whereby youth in the northern region have been challenged by the chief administrative authority, Adolf Lelil Afrique, to be promoters of peace and unity. He was speaking yesterday during the National Youth Day in that part of the republic. How did it all happen? Find out in this, news, in this report. It was at the commercial avenue Bamenda, where students, pupils, and administrative authorities all converged to celebrate the 52nd National Youth Day in Cameroon, under the auspice of Governor Lele Africa Dove, briefed the March Pass Wars with the University of Bamenda heavily represented. Thereafter, secondary, high schools, primary, and professional institutions took turns in the March Pass, which lasted for an hour and ten minutes. However, the different institutions have been praised by administrative authorities who, despite the prevailing situation in the northern region characterized by fear and uncertainty, all answered present to the event. The youth of the northern region, they, despite all, mobilized themselves fully today to showcase of the diversity of this nation and uh, confirm the need. Uh, uh, to work together to build out uh, a new future based on multiculturalism and bilingualism in this country. And like the head of state from this age, uh, we should work together to bring back the situation to normalcy in the Northwest region to allow the National Committee charged with the duty of taking care of uh, multiculturalism and bilingualism problems to come out and to dive into the many problems we are still facing. I would like therefore to congratulate all the stakeholders that have neglected nothing to make sure this occasion uh, unfold today peacefully. You two distinguished themselves during the week-long activities proud to February 11, received their places and have been challenged to be patriotic and promoters of national unity in Cameroon. Let's go over to Kumba in the southern region whereby the event in that part of the republic was chaired by the senior divisional officer for Mehmet Division where reports was that the turnout was timid with very few students from government, secondary, primary and higher institutions as well as militants of the ruling party all alongside present in the event. Let's have the SDO make an appraisal of yesterday's ceremony in Kumba. Uh, we had a wonderful event, uh, celebration if you want, the Met Division. You uh, saw the turnout of our youth. Uh, this is a testimony that uh, they, they are ready, ready to work in this, to work in peace, to ensure that the future will not be disturbed tomorrow. Let me see this opportunity also uh, to congratulate all the stakeholders. Those who have them are those who want us to have this wonderful event. What I can say in general after this. What is your take on the issue on the fact that you are facing a particular particular situation in the region? That is why it is very, very important for us to recognize that those who came out uh, uh, challenge all the things you can imagine to be with us today. Those who continue to have in their mind that uh, security is there for them. But concerning uh, some uh, private schools, uh, I was also, like you, a uh, little bit disturbed. But the truth is that uh, in the future, they are going to join us. 
and I'm sure, I'm sure that there will be many Youths have been told to make use of various resources at their disposal to be self-employed and prepare themselves for leadership positions in the country. The head of state Paul Bia made the call at the eve of the 52nd National Youth Day in Cameroon in his traditional February 10 address to the youth. Peter Sosim now takes us on some of those high points during his address. President Paul Bia, in his preliminary observation, noted that the country has been sailing on rough waters. The Boko Haram insurgency, armed gangs in the East region, an overwhelming influx of refugees, the fall in commodity prices, plus the unrest in the Northwest and Southwest regions are clear indicators of these difficulties. However, the head of state remains positive that things are under control. Compatriots at large, regardless of social status, remained united throughout the ordeals and such is what makes a great nation. By urging youths to begin bracing up for leadership, President Paul Bia observed that the world is becoming tougher as maintenance of world peace in particular by the United Nations is now being threatened by nationalism, protectionism and isolationism, a situation which poses problems for developing countries like Cameroon. But youths must remain focused on the country's emergence vision, he says. Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. Rather than yielding to the tempting mirage of illegal immigration and understanding a hazardous and often doomed trip, I invite you to play an active part in our great vision to achieve emergence by 2035. On a positive note, President Paul Bia says that government has put at the disposal of Cameroonian youths all resources in various domains to enable them to become self-employed and promote socio-economic integration. At 31st December 2017, 473,303 jobs had been identified for youths, exceeding our tax target of 4,000. Only 500,000 youth have already registered with the National Youth Observatory to participate in the aforementioned youth plan. The increasing exposure to new technologies, the head of state noted, has been a platform for youths to assess the management of state affairs. President Paul Bia nonetheless reminded them to be patriotic. Patriotic. Internet users working for Cameroon's development and influence are not passive followers or naive relays for staunch critics of the Republic. Youths have also been called to exercise their civil responsibilities in various elections slated for this year. And for the Indomitable Lions in particular, the 2019 African Cup of Nations on home soil should be an occasion to spotlight the nation. Let's now talk politics in this newscast, whereby members of the National Executive Committee of the Social Democratic Front Party, SDF, met over the weekend in Bamenda to, dis to discuss about the upcoming senatorial elections slated for March 25, 2018. As to whether or not the SDF will be part of the race is the content of this report, signed by Lovett Mbe. The National Executive Council of the Social Democratic Front met over the weekend at the residence of the SDF National Chairman Nijan Frundi to examine issues not only on the upcoming national convention but also about the senatorial elections that has been convened for March 2018. The National Executive Committee has just finished their meeting and they have put in place a commission to look into the issue of the senatorial elections that have just been announced by the head of state. And this committee is empowered to come up with uh, the proposals as to what the SDF, the actions of the SDF as concerns the senatorial elections. Are we going in? If we are going in, how are we going in? All of this will be made public in the days ahead. 
as to whether the national chairman will stand as a candidate for the 2018 presidential elections or that the SDF upcoming convention shall tell. We don't yet know whether, how the electoral elections will look like, so we don't even have the candidates yet. As concerns the presidential bid, uh, the third day of the national convention that is holding from the 22nd to the 24th of February is uh, devoted to the selection of the presidential candidate for the SDA. And uh, the National Executive Committee today has thrown open campaigns for any personal person who wants to be the uh, presidential candidate of the SDA. Nobody has declared his candidature to the National Executive Committee yet. So we are waiting to hear the days ahead as to who are going to be the candidate. All fingers are now crossed, waiting to see if the SF party will partake in the senatorial elections as well as the presidential elections in the country. I now take this communique whereby the Minister of Higher Education, Chancellor of Academic Orders, informs the national and international community that he shall continue with the distribution of the second consignment of computers offered by the President Paul Biam to Cameroon higher education students in respect of the following calendar. Wednesday, February 14, 2018, 10 a.m., University of Douala, 2 p.m., University of Boya, Friday, February 16, 2018, 10 a.m., University of Chang, and 2 p.m., the University of Bamenda. Out of Cameroon, with the launch of the 2018 Winter Olympics in South Korea, U.S. State Department spokesperson Hertha Nwet dismissed concerns that U.S. efforts to counter North Korea's charm offensive could create a rift with South Korea. The details with the VOA. As the world's top athletes light the Olympic flame in Pyeongchang, tensions over North Korea's nuclear threat simmer in the background, with the border just 64 kilometers away. Vice President Mike Pence Friday visited a memorial for a South Korean warship sunk by an explosion blamed on North Korea. He spoke about his talks with South Korean President Moon Jae-in. We shared our common objective uh, of confronting uh, the regime uh, in North Korea, whose militarism is on display behind me uh, to, until that time in which they permanently and irreversibly abandoned their nuclear and ballistic missile program. Asked if tough talk by Pence on North Korea could create a rift between the U.S. and South Korea, State Department spokesperson Heather Nauert said Washington's ties with Seoul and Tokyo are ironclad. The United States will not back away from its ally, and no one is going to drive a wedge between the United States and the Republic of Korea and the United States and, uh, and also Japan. Nauert added it is normal that Washington and Seoul sometimes approach North Korea's nuclear threat from a different mindset. Some analysts say that while the U.S. wants to keep up its maximum pressure campaign to further isolate Pyongyang, South Korea wants direct engagement with its northern neighbor, which could lead to a public clash. Where this uh, break may really uh, break out into the public is after the Olympics, when uh, the United States and Seoul are set to uh, engage in joint military exercises. And if South Korea seeks to push them back and the United States is not willing to, then that could lead to a real um, public break between Washington and Seoul that North Korea would very much um, uh, that North Korea would probably seek to exploit. The U.S. and South Korea have postponed joint military drills until after the Olympics. For now, though, the focus is on the Olympics fireworks. Cindy Sane, VOA News, the State Department. It is here, ladies and gentlemen, who plays the cap on today's 1 p.m. newscast on special television. We thank you for your kind attention. More news will be yours at 7 p.m. with Orion Duncan. 8 p.m. Veronica Aju BM. See you next. See you tomorrow. God willing. Good afternoon. STV.
votre télé.